Welcome to our review on stretching materials and storing energy. First thing that we need to know then is this equation for how we actually work out the energy transferred in stretching, which is 0.5 times the spring constant times the extension squared. Good news, this one is given to you on your physics data sheet so you don't have to memorize it. You just need to remember that that data sheet does have these formulae on there, therefore flip it over and use it as and when needed. So one thing to remember here is that the energy being transferred is also the work done. To give you an example of the kind of question they could ask you, a spring is four centimeters long and has a spring constant of 50 newtons per meter. Calculate the energy transferred when it is stretched to a length of 7.5 centimeters. First thing to do, as always in a calculation question, is highlight, underline, circle, or jot down the key bits of information from the question. So I've done that in red, as you can see. Because we've got centimeters, our standard units for length are meters. So we need to convert those centimeters to meters by dividing by 100 first of all. So four centimeters becomes 0.04 meters, and 7.5 centimeters becomes 0.075 meters. Then we're going to calculate the extension. So we know that our spring is changing from four centimeters to 7.5 centimeters. So all we do is 0.075 minus 0.04 gives us the extension of 0.035 meters. Using our data sheet, we then find our relevant formula, which is our energy is 0.5 times the spring constant times the extension squared. And then we substitute in our values, so 0.5 times 50 times 0.035 squared, put that into our calculator, and we get our answer of 0.9 joules. As always with our calculations, make sure you are writing down each step of your working in the answer space so that even if something goes wrong on using your calculator, you will still get some of the marks. If we now consider a different type of graph to the ones we've seen previously, when we're considering the graph we get if we had an elastic band. So we've still got our extension and our force as we saw with our springs, but we get a very different shape graph this time. And that's because we've got a non-linear relationship between our force and extension with an elastic band. The last thing we really need to consider is what happens when materials deform. So when we deform a material, they store energy. And what we actually want to do is, it, depending on the situation and the use of the material, we may want them to regain their shape or we may want them to stay permanently deformed. So this will determine which material we'd select for a particular use based on what the outcome would be. So if we wanted them to regain their shape, then we'd design materials that transfer the energy back as they do so. If we wanted them to stay permanently deformed on impacts and something like a crash barrier on the motorway would be a great example of this, then we'd select something that's made of a different material that won't transfer that energy back as it regains its shape. The last thing you really want is for someone to have crashed into the crash barrier, so you've got injured people in a car crash, and then the crash barrier just decides to restore itself to its original shape, thereby shooting the car back into traffic and creating yet further collisions. That would be a very messy scenario. So we want the crash barriers to stay permanently deformed on impact because that's how they actually carry out their purpose. Hopefully at the end of this video, you can describe the difference between a linear and a non-linear relationship for force and extension, and you can calculate the work done in stretching.